Welcome. This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report and now of FukushimaUpdate.com. And today I am honored to be joined on the line from the United States by Arnie Gunderson, a 39-year uh, veteran of the nuclear power engineering industry and uh, a, a former senior vice president in uh, the nuclear industry who has experience managing and operating 70 nuclear power plants across the United States and who has also um, helped to write, the, co-author the first edition of the Department of Energy's decommissioning handbook, uh, a veritable fount of information on the subject of nuclear power. Um, Arne Gunderson, it is a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today. Well, thanks for having me and welcome. Good morning from Vermont. Well, welcome from Japan. Um, good evening from Japan, I should say. Uh, okay, well, it's great to talk to you. And so let's get straight into some of the, the latest developments um, with Fukushima, obviously, um, something that, that everyone's concerned about right now. We have a lot of worrying news regarding um, uh, new hotspots that are being discovered in Tokyo and other such uh, developments. What can you tell us about the latest about what's happening there? The, um, we're also aware of actually more hotspots than are being publicly discussed. Um, you know, I'm not sure that all of the hotspots are new. Um, it's, it's likely that as people begin to look, they're going to find hotspots. It's pretty clear that Tokyo got, uh, got hit with a large amount of radiation sometime in the first uh, two weeks after the accident. And some of that is definitely coming from, uh, uh, from from that time period. But interestingly, um, we just got some data in here that shows that um, air filters on houses in Tokyo that have actually seen an increase in radiation in the last month compared to two months before that. And, and that could not have happened from uh, the, the, the first Fukushima blast. I, I think what's happening is that the incineration of waste around uh, Tokyo and around Japan is re-volatilizing the cesium and um, therefore you're beginning to see it again and it's creating new hotspots. So the hotspots are both old and new. Um, uh, the, the, um, the new ones concern me more because um, it's re-volatilizing it and it's no longer just on the ground. We're, we're seeing this on, on air filters that um, that were replaced a month ago. And uh, so to see that is an indication that the cesium is now airborne again. Extremely worrying. Well, well, how about um, the latest announcement from TEPCO that apparently they're going to uh, be able to achieve cold shutdown of, uh, a month earlier than, than expected? What does that really mean? Um, you know, cold shutdown is an industry term. And it, it means that the nuclear reactor is below 100 C. And, um, but it also means that the nuclear fuel is in the nuclear reactor. Um, and and th remember the pellets are, are about the size of my finger um, joint and they're in long tubes that are four meters high and there's thousands of these tubes. So if the water in a normal reactor is at, is at 100 C or less, that means that that long tube is essentially at 100 C or less too, and hence, in a normal reactor, that's what cold shutdown is. I, I, I think TEPCO is applying it as a misnomer to um, uh, to claim that Fukushima one, two, and three are in cold shutdown. What they mean is that the water is at 100 degrees C, but if if the reactor is melted down, and it certainly has melted down, that really means that the um, that the molten mass at the bottom is not at 100 C yet. You know, there was a video out about two weeks ago, a TEPCO video out about two weeks ago, that had a, um, a cloud of smoke coming from inside Unit 2, and a separate video had a cloud of smoke coming from inside Unit 3. That's steam. And the, the problem there is that the, the, it, that clearly shows that the containments have not retained their integrity, that there's a leak in the containment, and they shouldn't be steaming if you're in cold shutdown. Certainly not. So what do you think is, is the next step in this process for uh, TEPCO and the Japanese government? I think you know, what they've been able to do, and, and it's a good thing, on Unit 1, um, they have the... Uh, uh, the tent in place, and uh, and that's a good thing. What they'll do now is 
connect that tent to um, large air filters and then run it up the stack. So in the next month or so, they'll, they'll get a, uh, be able to clean the air from Unit 1. I think the next reactor to do that on is probably Unit 4 um, and then Unit, uh, unit 2. Unit 3 is such a mess, I, I have a hard time believing I could put a tent over it unless they remove all that rubble first. But, um, you know, what, what TEPCO means by cold shutdown is they've been able to draw the water out of the bottom of the nuclear containment, filter it through that Arriva system, and pump it back in. They have to filter it first because it's so radioactive, it would, it would crap up the pipes and the pumps and expose workers needlessly. So then they've got this... Um, um, highly radioactive filter, the Areva filters are becoming highly radioactive, more radioactive than any filter in any power plant that's ever been operated. So we've, we've taken a problem and, and kicked the can down the road a little bit. We've taken the highly radioactive water and made it less radioactive and are now pumping that back through the, the reactor. Every loop it does that though, it's in contact with the raw nuclear fuel so it becomes contaminated again. So those Areva filters are becoming highly, highly radioactive. And the next question for the Japanese is what are we going to do with those filters? Um, it's, it's never been, um, there's never been an experience of disposing of filters that are that radioactive within the nuclear industry.